right, the clerk tells me that you can exercise your rights under Rule 2.14 of the court, which would be you'd waive a trial here today. I'll ask the state to give me an offer of proof. In all likelihood, I would make a guilty finding that you could appeal for a jury trial. That's what your plan is? Um, I'm not sure that I understand completely the specific point of that, but the 2.14 reference eludes me. Rule, 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 rule 2.14 is, is a district court or circuit court rule that provides that if someone wants to waive their trial, they can do that. Uh, you, we were set up, to, we were, we were going to conduct a trial in your case today, correct? That was my understanding, Your Honor. Thank, I'm thank sorry you. If, there, if I was mistaken in that. Hey, let go of me. 
the individual was driving alongside the individual clasping his neck. Um, the individual let go of him at the edge of the road. He continued walking east in an easterly direction. And um, at, it was at that time Mr. Garrett Ian observed that his attacker was Bradford Hutchinson. He had known him from previous interactions in the past. Um, he had described a number of incidences where he, uh, where the defendant had essentially harassed him um, on occasion. So he knew of him. He did confront the defendant and asked him why he did that. Uh, the defendant indicated he didn't know who he was, uh, pretended not to know him, um, and that was that. He didn't admit to Mr. Ian that he did, but there was um, <coughs> someone else in the area at the time. For the court's information, uh, Mr. Gary Ian did make a report. Uh, the following morning, it was roughly 1 a.m. or so, he went to the police department and talked about Mr. Jason Thompson to report what I just before the court. And um, Jason, the following day, went to speak with Mr. Hutchinson and did so. Mr. Hutchinson admitted that he was there and the interaction with uh, Mr. Ian, but he didn't admit to assaulting him. But Jason Thompson applied for an arrest warrant, which he did receive. And um, Steve Corrigan, Officer Keith Corrigan, arrested the defendant on June 9th. It was about 11 or 9 at the police department. And he, after he read his Miranda rights, the defendant waved and didn't speak with him about it, uh, just briefly, when confronted by Officer Corrigan whether he assaulted Mr. Ian, the defendant replied, he wasn't saying he never touched him. What he said was that there was contact. It was incidental, accidental, mutual. He then went on to say how the freaking people have been harassing him and gang stalking him. Uh, and, and that's the state's comments. All right, anything you want to say? I realize you have a different version. You, but we're not here to try your case because you're waiving that opportunity. So I just wanted to make sure the state had sufficient facts to prove the case beyond a reasonable doubt, at least to my satisfaction, and that and they have. Do you have a recommendation here? Right, the state, um, for the court's information, does have a criminal record. His most recent convictions are from 2006. He was convicted in February of 2006 for breach of bail. He served three days. In May of 2006, he was convicted of harassment. He had a 60 days third sentence that was ultimately suspended. For the court's information, or, or the state would recommend to the court for a sentence, the state sentence to 10 to 90 days in the House of Corrections, suspended for two years upon condition of behavior, upon the condition that he not have any contact with Garrett Ian. Um, I'd also ask that the court order a year of probation to serve and that treatment be ordered and um, if he comply with any treatment as ordered by probation. I think the court's familiar with Mr. Hutchinson, is my understanding um, he's engaged in services. Um, and the community for his mental health. Uh, Did I you think, say probation to, to serve? To serve, a year to serve. And the reason for that is just to simply monitor him within the community, um, make sure that he's complying with his mental health recommendations. And for the court's information, as I mentioned, when I was making that out for this wasn't the first interaction he's had with Mr. Ian. He's, uh, Mr. Ian reported <coughs> um, an incident where in February of 2013, when he approached Mr. Ian, he waved a can canister of pepper spray or mace inches from his face. When Mr. Ian asked him to stop, he tried to wrap his arm around his head. And this occurred, importantly, in the parking lot it, excuse me, behind the other case? Margarita's. Well, I think this is in support. We're not trying that case. This is just in support of her recommendation at this point. What's happening? Just, 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 this is in support of her recommendation that you have no contact with Mr. Ian, that's all. Well, I would like that. Okay. Could it, that be made mutual? I can't do that in this kind of a case, no. Okay. And he also reported a couple of instances where... Alright, there's sufficient, there's sufficient okay. reason for the no-contact. Okay, and the other thing is... Is um, E-A-N? E-A-N, e yes. Um, I want the no-contact, Your Honor. I want that. That's it. That's it. You got it. And finally, Thank I think you. probation is appropriate. Um, I think the court, I read several emails that I um, attached to a motion that I filed in this court earlier in this case. Um, I think there's, there's grounds to be concerned about um, his, his behavior, the argument rates concerning, and they were made threats. Right, I'm going to accept the state's recommendation here. So this is a sentence, although it stayed because you're on appeal. Thank you. 90 days, the House of Corrections suspended for two years on good behavior. Good behavior always brings no felony, misdemeanor, major motor vehicle violations. There are some additional conditions here. One is no contact with Mr. Ian. Um, and well, I'll, get, I'll get into your bail status in a second, and probation for one year. Um, so that, that sentence is stayed pending your appeal. However, your bail conditions remain in effect. And that, that the bail conditions um, 
just to re remind you, I have no contact with Mr. Ian. Uh, we had a P.O. Box 1860 in Keene for you. Is that still your name? That's correct, Your Honor. Okay. We refrain from alcohol, narcotics, and controlled substances. We, I know there are meds. We talked about them. I continue to enjoy my sobriety, Your you take, Honor. You take your, your, your meds as, as uh, required and no driver without a valid license. Those remain in effect. If you want any relief or modification in the bail orders, next stop is Superior Court to ask for that. But again, I gave it uh, a week or two to get all the paperwork filed and everything. Otherwise, Those are acceptable okay. conditions. Okay. All right. You're all set then. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. That's, so we're done here today. Done here, yes. Thank you, Your now, Honor. Now, if you if you change your mind, they'll, they'll tell you if you if you want to change your mind about your appeal, they'll kick it back here on a remand. Okay. So in other words, if you decide you don't want to go forward with your jury trial, mm -hmm. they won't let you waive a jury trial. Okay. You'll have to you'll need to have your jury, jury trial to come back here. Yeah. Okay. There's no playing around, in other words, is what you're right. telling me. Right. Right. Okay. And then I'll leave, and I'll, the other matters we talked about are up to you to pursue if that's what you want to do. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you. Karen Rose. 